Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So some of you may know that I visited Vietnam last year in October 2022 and it comes in four parts of vlogs on my channel which you can view right now. But ever since I posted those four vlogs, I received quite a number of questions from like friends, family, some of you have commented about my trip in Vietnam. So I decided to actually do this uh, travel guide video to put in as much information as I can into an entire video for you guys. So this video will consist of our entire 10 days itinerary in chronological order. I will talk about the cost, where we book our transportation, the accommodation, and some tips before you go to Vietnam. Okay, and before we start this video, for simplicity's sake, all amounts mentioned will be in the currency of either Vietnamese dong or US dollar. I will also be reading off my phone quite a bit because I took down a lot of notes to ensure that you guys have everything you need. So without further ado, let's just get started. Okay, so first up, day one. We first flew to Hanoi via Scoot, which is the capital of Vietnam. Our two-way flight ticket was just a little over $150 because we booked it about four to five months in advance. We landed in Hanoi at 4 p.m. and we took a Grab to the hotel. So Grab is quite widely used in Vietnam and it's very convenient to use as well. The cost for us to ride from the airport to our accommodation in Hanoi was at 358k Vietnamese dong, which is about $15. And it was a 40 minute ride to the city. We booked a boutique hotel called Paradise Hotel and Spa and this is located in Oak Quarter area which costs us around $37 per night. We were only going to stay there for one night because we had to take the sleeper bus very early the next morning to go to Sapa so we didn't want to spend too much on this hotel and we also wanted to find somewhere which was very close to our sleeper bus departure pick up point the next day. Okay, so after checking in, it was quite late already and we decided to head for dinner at Pizza for P. If you don't know what Pizza for P is, which I didn't know as well, but Jerome told me about it. Apparently, they are a really famous Italian um, chain store in Vietnam and the food there is simply amazing. I will highly recommend that you make a reservation before going, especially if you are planning to go on weekend nights. When we went there, we didn't make a reservation. We had to wait 45 minutes to go in. You have to try their crab pasta and their clam chowder soup there. It's amazing. One of the best that I have ever eaten and the total bill was $45. For $45, this is not cheap cheap in Vietnam. It's considered a little bit more towards the pricey side but if you think about it in terms of the quality and the quantity that we ate, I think it was really really worth it. After dinner, we went over to the popular weekend night market which is along the street called Hang Tao. If you pronounce it directly but I think if you pronounce it in Vietnamese with the tones, it's something else. I most likely did not pronounce it correctly. Anyway, mostly they sell clothes over there, not too much of food. We did try this Vietnamese snack along the street. We saw a lot of this colorful cracker ball snack and we thought it was really interesting because there was like mist coming out of it but when we tried it, it's actually just rice cracker and dry ice underneath. I guess it's an entertaining dish for kids but overall it did not taste that nice. Okay, so day two. We woke up at 6 a.m. The sleeper bus location was just a five minute walk from our accommodation. The bus was actually set to leave at 6.30 a.m. but our hotel host told us that usually the bus will leave 30 minutes later. So they will recommend for you to come half an hour earlier and you will end up having to wait for an hour for the bus to depart. If you are okay to take the risk, if they say that the departure is at 6.30 a.m., just appear there at 6.30 because most likely the bus is only going to leave at 7. But if you are not a risk taker and you do not trust me, then by all means, it's always good to be early. So we decided to book the more budget option for the sleeper bus, which costs us about $8 to $9. Uh, I would recommend for you to just get the luxury cabin actually. Um, it's a six hour ride. If you are willing to pay about 20 USD instead for comfort, then um, I would highly recommend that option instead. The journey to Sapa was 6 hours and they had 2 rest stops in between. Make sure you have some small change because the toilets there do require you to pay a 3000 dong entry fee. When we reached the drop off point in Sapa, we took a taxi for 100k Vietnamese dong. There are a lot of people that will come and approach you to ask you if you need a taxi to the accommodation. Little did we know that our 5 to 10 minute ride was supposed to only cost 50,000 dong. So we did end up paying double 
that amount because we weren't really too sure um, how much we were supposed to pay. There is also no grab in SAPA. So I hope this gives you guys like a better idea of roughly how much you should be paying for your taxi rides when you're in SAPA. So the weather in SAPA in October was pretty good. It's about 20 to 21 degrees Celsius. A single jacket will do but if you ride a scooter, wear maybe an extra layer, the, the wind gets really really cold and if you are the rider on the scooter, I would recommend gloves because your hands will freeze off. Like Jerome's hands almost froze off when he was riding. It was freezing. Anyway, for the accommodation in Safa, we stayed at this beautiful, beautiful place called Mega View Homestay. It was only about $75 per night and you get beautiful views of like the mountains just behind your room. I do have to mention that in order to get to the homestay, there is no direct route for the car to drop you directly off at the doorstep. You will actually have to walk down a flight of stairs. This flight of stairs, you will have to carry your luggage on your own as well to get to the accommodation. For the scooter rental in Sapa, we booked it through Clue as well. It is four to five USD per day. We decided to go and have lunch at this place called Good Morning Vietnam. They have quite a number of good reviews on Google, which is why we decided to go there. The must try is their coconut curry and spring roll. Spring rolls, delicious. Coconut curry was not bad as well, but we weren't really used to having coconut inside our curry. It's a very interesting local dish. All right, so after lunch, we decided to head down to this place called Kat Kat Village. This is one of the most popular trekking trails in Sapa. Reason for it I think is mostly because of the accessibility and it's a relatively easy hike. So entrance fee into Kakat Village is at 90,000 dong per pack. It will take you about 45 minutes to walk all the way down to the village and they have beautiful like photo spots along the way down so it was a really fun trek in general. As for the village itself right when you reach the bottom there's not a lot to do. It's mainly a place for you to just view like the beautiful waterfall, the river and they have cafes all around the area. Um, it's just for you to chill and relax before you continue your climb back up. The climb back up also took us around 30 to 45 minutes. It was quite a steep slope up. If you guys don't want to walk, there's a whole lot of motorbikes that will be waiting to offer you a ride to go up. I'm not too sure how much it costs, but it'll probably be around 20,000 dong. So we went back to our accommodation after the hike before heading out for dinner. We decided to go to this restaurant nearby called Sang Mio, which was recommended by our hotel host. This is because we wanted to try their sturgeon or salmon hot pot set, which is a really famous uh, meal in Sapa. I super loved the soup at this restaurant. It was this tomato based soup with like herbs, veggies inside. It just went so well together. The sturgeon wise that we had was a little bit fishy. So if you don't really like that kind of fish, I would recommend for you to go for their salmon hot pot instead. The entire meal is a little bit pricey for Sapa. It was 600,000 dong in total. The portion was huge. So actually three to four people can finish one set. Moving on to day three. So on day three, we went to Fancy Pen Terrace and Homestay for our breakfast slash lunch. The food here cost around 50 to about 100,000 dong per pack. It's not too expensive. This was one of my favorite cafes in the entire trip in Vietnam because firstly, they had this like beautiful view of like the mountains. Like you just sip your coffee and you're like, you're like in serenity. And at the same time, they also had like a family of poodles that if you call them, they will actually come, they will run towards you and you can play with them. It's like double happiness. I was really in heaven. The food also pretty decent. It was quite good. After we spent like, I think almost two hours at this cafe, we actually headed to Love Waterfall. There are two main popular waterfalls in Sapa called Silver and Love Waterfall. We just decided on doing one. The entrance fee to go into Love Waterfall was about 70,000 dong per pack. The trek was about an hour plus or so to go there and come back. In terms of the waterfall wise, it was kind of underwhelming, but the views when you are walking to the waterfall is really amazing. You feel like you're in a little kind of like fairyland. I don't really know how to describe it, but I hope these videos can speak for itself. So after we finished that little trek at the waterfall area, we decided to continue driving down the road. I can't remember the name of the highway, but I'll leave it on the screen over here for you guys to refer to. So we continued to drive on this highway away from Sapa Town area and we reached this little hut 
place that sells coffee for 30,000 dong per pack and you could sit there and just enjoy the views. They also had this attraction over there whereby you could take photos at these different spots and the admission fee for this is 40,000 dong. I can't remember the exact location of this place, just drive along the road away from Sapa Tao and it will be on your left side. After this, we decided to drive backwards which is towards Sapa Town and we ended up at this place called Sapa Heaven's Gate. Admission to this place is 120k Vietnamese dong. This place is really a whole lot of beautiful viewpoints. You can see the valley. They have like something similar to the body gates. They have these steps that you can go up, sit on top and take a picture. Really, really nice place to just play around, take photos, just breathtaking. After that, we decided to go for lunch at this um, cafe nearby called Mong Mo Garden. This place, beautiful views of the rice terraces. Okay, so after lunch, this is like the highlight of any Sapa trip, which is to trek through Moong Valley. The thing is that we didn't trek, we decided to ride our scooter through the valley and this took us about two hours. I highly highly do not recommend for you guys to ride a scooter through this valley because the roads there are really really narrow and if you are not familiar with the roads, it can get a little bit dangerous. But if I were to go back to Sapa, I would most probably do a one night trek whereby I get to stay in one of the homestays in the village. If you do not have time for a one night trek, then you guys can book a local trekking tour during the daytime. On our way up after Muang Valley, we dropped by this little pretty cafe called Tu Yen Mei Homestay to have a drink. Again, super beautiful views. Everywhere around Sapa is just so surrounded by amazing nature. So we went back to our accommodation after that and had dinner because we were so tired and now let's move on to day 4. Compared to our first two days in Sapa where we had pretty clear skies, just slightly cloudy weather, on day 4 everything was just gone. The clouds have covered everything, it was so so foggy, there was literally nothing that we could see. So we decided on our last day to just go cafe hopping. Uh, we went back to Fancy Pen Terrace and Homestay because I loved the poodles over there. And we also went to this other cafe called Pao Kafi to have more coffee. And we just waited around until 4am for our sleeper bus departure time because we were heading over to our next place Nin Bin. For the tickets on the sleeper bus to Nin Bin, we booked it through this um, third party website called Gecko Roots. It was a 9 hours travel and we were not prepared for how uncomfortable the ride would be because we went for the budget option, not the luxury cabin one. It was a really really long journey, it was squeezy, it was cramped and they even had like people sitting along the aisles of the bus, not even on the seat. So I was quite surprised by that. So that's why I would highly recommend that if you guys travel for 9 hours, such a long journey, get the luxury cabin, pay a little bit more for the comfort. But anyway, we survived it and we reached Nimbin at 1am. Our hotel was kind enough to offer to pick us up at this timing, although it was actually just a 5 minute walk away from the bus drop off point. We stayed at this place called Liberty Hall in Tam Kok. Beautiful place, it's a new hotel overlooking the rice terraces as well as the limestone rocks and the cost per night was just at 60 US dollars. Okay, so day 5. First, we had breakfast at the hotel. They had a really really nice spread. Um, this included like first scrambled eggs, sausages, spring rolls and we left the hotel at 10 a.m. to go and get coffee. So we went to this nearby cafe called Coffee Break. The yogurt coffee here is so good. It also has a really nice ambience inside. The coffee here costs around 50 to 60k Vietnamese dong. We then headed to Trang An departure boat ticket to take the boat tour in Ninh Binh which is a very very famous attraction over here. Each boat can take 4 people and we decided to buy all four seats on the boat so that we can have the whole boat to ourselves and we had to pay 1 million dong for four seats so it's at 250k dong per pax. The entire boat tour lasted for two hours. It's a really scenic and calm ride through like the river and you really can just sit on the boat and enjoy the scenery. It's really nice how they don't use any electric boats there. Everything is all row boats so very environmentally friendly. Oh, uh, one more thing, just take note for this boat tour, there are three different routes that you can choose from. One has more temples than caves. One has sort of like a 
balance between temples and caves and then one has more caves than temples we decided to go with the second option but i would actually recommend going for the one with more caves instead because over time right all the temples kind of look the same. So after the boat tour, we decided to go and have lunch nearby having fried noodles or fried rice. Just a tip is that if you don't know what to order in Vietnam, getting fried noodles or fried rice will taste decently good. After lunch, we headed to this place called Baidin Pagoda. It is one of the largest pagoda complex in the whole of Vietnam. Take note that if you are riding a scooter there along the road as you approach the entrance of the pagoda, there will be quite a number of people that will approach you and try to get you to park with them. Don't park with them, drive all the way in until you see the, the pagoda entrance and you pay for a ticket over there. I think it is safer if you were to park closer. We were not so smart, we got like influenced to park at one of the, the shops that are further out so we had to walk further in to reach the entrance. For Baidin Pagoda, there's a few ticket options that you can choose from. We decided to go with the one that offered the electric car to bring us around the complex. This was 150k dong per pax. They will give you a recommended route for you to see the whole complex and it's like a hop on and off kind of concept. You just show the locals where you want to go and they will tell you which electric car you will need to get on. So the entire complex is super huge and it'll probably take you like an entire day if you want to see all the recommended routes on the map. So we skipped a lot of it and we went to the main attraction which is the really really tall Pagoda where you can see 360 views of Nin Bin. Honestly, for this attraction, I would not recommend that you visit it unless you are very interested in religious culture in Vietnam. Another reason is also because it's pretty far out from the town area of Nin Bin, so you will need to ride for about 30 to 45 minutes to reach the pagoda complex. So after visiting Baidin Pagoda, we went to have dinner at this place called Family Restaurant to try goat meat. Goat meat is a famous local dish in Nin Bin. In terms of our experience with goat meat, we didn't quite like it. The meat is on the tougher side, but I do have friends that say that they love it so definitely go and try goat meat there tell me if you like it or not on day 6 we woke up at 8am to visit Moa Cave this is just a 10 minute ride from our hotel and it's also another super famous attraction here in Nimbin. Same thing for this attraction is that if you were to get to the entrance, there will be a lot of people trying to stop you along the way to park with them. Just drive all the way straight in until you see the entrance. On the right side, there's a shop that is so close to it and they charge 5,000 dong for the parking. If you want to park directly inside the entrance itself, it's going to cost you 10,000 dong. Either option is fine, but it may be safer to park directly inside the entrance. Okay, so the entrance to Mao Caves was 100k per person. The cave itself is not that spectacular. It sits right beside this place called Hang Mua Viewpoint, which is what people go there for. It's a very popular place to visit because you get 360 views of the surrounding area. It's really a place for you to take pictures but I would recommend for you to go either at sunset or sunrise because when we reached there at around 9am it was pretty crowded already. Take note that it is 500 steps to get to the top of the viewpoint. I know 500 steps doesn't sound like a lot but we were sweating buckets by the time we reached the top because each step was pretty steep. You can allocate to spend around two hours over here. Okay, next. We arranged for our pickup from the hotel at 2 a.m. to head back to Hanoi. We booked this on Klook as well. We booked a private limousine to bring us back and this was at about 7 to 8 USD per pax. Back at Hanoi, I can't remember the accommodation that we stayed at but it was somewhere around Old Quarter area. We ate pizza for P for dinner again because I was craving for their crab pasta and then we went to watch the very very famous water puppet show. Show. The cost for the water puppet show will vary depending on which seat row that you want. We decided to go with the front row seats which is 300k per pax. The front row seats consist of the first four rows and we got the fourth row. I would actually recommend for you guys to come early and book a first row seat because that is the best view that you're gonna get. The chairs inside the theatre themselves right, are not elevated very well. So although we paid for front row seats, right, we were on the fourth row and there 
it was a lot of people that was blocking me. I could only see like half the stage. So the entire show was about 15 minutes. Um, you do have to get an audio translator for 10,000 dong just right outside the entrance before you go into the theater. The entire show recounts Vietnamese folk tales and legends. So you learn quite a bit about the culture in this way. Day seven. Okay, this was one part of the trip that I was really really excited for. We had a 7 a.m. pickup to go to Halong Bay. This transportation was booked via our cruise ship company Orchid Cruises and it was 20 USD per pax for a round trip on a limousine. So they drove us to the meeting point at the harbour which we then had to take a speedboat to reach the cruise ship. We booked a two-day one-night stay on Orchid Cruises and this cost us $420 per night. And I think the good thing about these luxury cruises is that they limit the number of people on the boat to 20 guests and the rooms were seriously amazing like i will let the videos speak for themselves it's a really really nice romantic getaway if you ask me if you want to propose to your girlfriend you want to celebrate your anniversary this is an amazing trip to do if you want to see more videos of the room that we stayed at and the different activities that we did on this boat feel free to catch my halong bay video i will leave the link down below so after we checked into our rooms lunch was served i don't remember everything we ate but there was definitely oysters and the meal was really good in general. There were a few activities that were lined up for us on the cruise, all of which you can decide if you want to participate in or not. We first visited Trang Trang Cave. This is a 300 meter hike through a really long cave on Cat Bar Island. Then we had one for one happy hour when we went back to the boat. Um, and then we had cooking demonstration to make Vietnamese spring rolls. And then we had a luxurious five course dinner meal. The ambience of the dinner was pretty amazing because they had really dramatic entrances like they would carry the food on their arms like this and they would walk into the dining hall with really really dramatic music playing it was an experience of a lifetime so i really enjoyed this experience even though the food was so average for my taste but i felt that the chicken was a bit dry food was a little bit tasteless but in general it was still quite an enjoyable experience okay so day eight i'm really running out of breath here guys i feel like i've been talking for a really long time um <clears throat> water water okay i'm ready Day 8, 6 a.m. breakfast because we had to go to kayaking. The kayaking activity was actually quite fun. They gave you about one hour to just kayak on your own around the cruise ship. So you can go really, really close to the limestone rocks on Halong Bay. And I guess it gives you like a different viewpoint. Instead of being on a cruise ship, you are now on a kayak and you can like go around the rocks if you want to. So after kayaking, we went back to our rooms to bathe and we prepared for check. Out. So we got transported back to Hanoi and the hotel that we stayed at this time was the West Hotel. This was $37 per night. It was an okay stay. To be honest, we didn't quite love this place. We felt that in terms of the cleanliness, they didn't really do fantastically well. You guys can book other hotels as long as it's around Old Quarter area. It will be quite convenient. So for the rest of day 8, we actually just rested. Um, we didn't do much because we were really tired from like what we did in the morning and having to travel all the way back to Hanoi. Day 9. Day 9 is our last full day in Hanoi and we woke up pretty late at about 12 to go and have lunch slash breakfast. We decided to go to this place called The Social Club because they had an overwhelmingly high number of reviews on Google. Um, they had 3k reviews with 4.4 stars so we thought that the food would be super good. The food turned out to be a little bit disappointing but the ambience of this place is really nice. So I think it's more of like a cafe for you to drink, have some coffee and do some work. So after that we kind of like just walked around the town area and we decided to hop on a cyclo. The guy charged us 150k for a 10 minute ride and I think we were overcharged. So I googled online after that that a one hour ride on the cyclo cost 100k. So we did overpay him. Um, I'm not too sure how much a 5 to 10 minute ride will cost but you guys can sort of get an idea from what I just shared. We also went to this place called Kafa Cafe. They sell incredibly nice drinks or maybe I just ordered the correct one but their cheese foam oolong milk tea is really the bomb. This drink, amazing. If I had more days in Vietnam, 
I would definitely come back here to try it again. So at 6pm, we booked a local food walking tour. You can book this over WhatsApp. I will leave the link down below for you guys. I think it was around $20 per pack. And we went together in a group of six travellers with our Vietnamese guide. The tour was really, really quite fun. Like you get to try food you never thought of trying, especially the sand worms pancake. This is something that is seasonal in Vietnam and they usually usually fry these worms with eggs and vegetables. It tastes very interesting, it's a hundred percent to try. Our local guide name was Sarah and she spoke fairly good English and you can learn more about the Vietnamese culture from her as well. We are finally at day 10. So on day 10 we had breakfast and we actually prepared to go to the airport because our flight was in the morning. A tip for you guys is that we initially booked a grab to bring us from our hotel back to the airport but after that one of the hotel staff came to us and she told us that the fee for their driver is actually lower than Grab. So if you're ever in Vietnam and you need transportation, check with your hotel first how much their private driver is before you proceed to book a Grab ride. I hope I didn't overload you guys with information. I tried my best to to tell you everything in a very concise manner. But anyway, we have reached the tips before you go to Vietnam section. I have four main tips over here. So number one is that parking is free unless otherwise stated. Most of the time when we parked our scooter, it was free. It was only in Nimbin at those attractions like Moa Caves, Baidin Pagoda, and the Trang An departure boat ticket area that we had to pay for parking. All this have to be paid in Vietnamese Dong cash. Secondly, if you guys need to withdraw any money from the ATMs in Vietnam, they have a 3% charge. Uh, we were charged 3% when we withdrew money in Sapa as well as the airport. Third tip is that most places actually do allow you to pay with your credit card, um, especially if it is restaurants and cafes. But do note that some places do charge a 3% fee and we realize that this is the case everywhere if you are in Sapa. Okay, and the fourth tip, this is a really important tip actually, I should have put it as the first. But anyway, we booked a lot of like our transport accommodation, um, scooter rentals on cloak and we actually realized that you can just book them directly at your hotel. You don't have to book anything in advance. You need a sleeper bus, ask your hotel. You need to go on a trekking tour, ask your hotel. You need private transportation to get from like different cities, ask your hotel. If you need scooter rental, just ask your hotel. Actually, not a lot of planning will be needed this way because it's really easy to just get your hotel to help you make all the bookings. Okay, so we finally reached the last part of this video and I'm going to give you guys a really quick total price breakdown. It's not going to be an exact amount because I don't have the energy to count exactly how much we spent but this is going to give you like a really really good gauge. So in total, we spent about $1,080 per pack. So our flight tickets were around $150, accommodation for 8 nights $220, transportation $100, admission tickets another $100, cruise was $210, and for food and everything else, um, we didn't do much shopping. That is about $300. If you want to convert this into Singapore dollars for my Singaporeans, that is about $1,400. It was a super affordable and fun trip for me. I hope you guys found this video useful. I am going to lose my voice very soon. I think this video is very long. I will know when I edit it later. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any more questions on Vietnam, I don't know what I missed out, do leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. See you next week.